21st March is set for next year's school term commencement. Early voters to cast ballot under stringent SOPs. Hello and good evening. Thank you for tuning in. You're watching News at 10 with me, Shuhaid Arifin. The Ministry of Education, MOE, announced today that the academic calendar for the 2022-2023 school session for states in Group A is from 21st March 2022 to 11 March 2023. For schools in the Group B states, the school session will also begin on the same date, but will end on 12 March 2023. Group A refers to the state of Johor, Kedah, Kelantan and Terengganu, while Group B comprises the states of Melaka, Negeri Sembilan, Pahang, Perak, Perlis, Pulau Pinang, Sabah, Sarawak, Selangor and the three federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan and Putrajaya. The MOE in a statement today also said that the third term of the 2021-2022 school session for the states in Group A will begin on 2nd January until 20th March 2022, while in Group B from 3rd January to 20th March 2022. The academic calendar can be downloaded from MOE's website as shown on your screen. The Selangor Health Department, JKNS, has revealed that no new cases of cholera have been detected so far after one case was reported on 21st October. State Health Director Dr. Dr. Shari Ngadiman said the 56-year-old local woman from Battalion District has fully recovered after receiving proper treatment. The results of the investigation found that the case had experienced severe diarrhea symptoms and had sought treatment on the same day at a private health facility. The case was treated as an outpatient and stool samples were also taken for testing. The test result from the National Public Health Laboratory showed that the presence of the Vibrio cholera serogroup 01 and serotype Ogawa bacteria. Subsequently, all close contacts were screened, including the food handler involved, and environmental sampling was also conducted. Dr. Dr. Shari in a statement said further investigation had been carried out, but the department could not identify the cause of the infection. He said JKNS would like to emphasize that cholera can spread quickly and can result in death if not treated immediately. The public is advised to only drink treated or boiled water, practice good self-hygiene, not eat raw or uncooked food and seek immediate treatment if they have any symptoms of cholera. The Health Ministry today received contribution of coal chain equipment worth 6 million ringgit from the Japanese government through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, thus beefing up the storage capacity of COVID-19 vaccines. Its Minister Kairi Jamaluddin at the handing over ceremony said Malaysia commanded the Japanese government's selfless giving during the pandemic and their stance of helping other nations struggling against COVID-19. The donation consists of 184 refrigerators, 1,343 cold boxes, and 1,579 data loggers that will be distributed in phases to 436 public health facilities throughout the country. Kari also said that the event is also a great example of strategic alliance that showcases the best of humanity in battling COVID-19 together and striving for a common goal. He added that this was made possible following the long-standing and excellent relationship between Malaysia and Japan. Malaysia had also received 1 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine donated by Japan in July this year to intensify the vaccination process under PICK. Japanese ambassador to Malaysia, Oka Hiroshi, who was also present at the event, applauded the Malaysian government's robust vaccination process and expressed appreciation on Malaysia's gesture in treating Japanese citizens in Malaysia equally in its vaccination program. 
A total of 11,557 early voters will cast their votes at 31 polling centres starting 8 a.m. tomorrow in the 15th Malacca State Election. Election Commission EC Secretary Dato Ikmaruddin Ishaq said the early voters comprise 9,217 military personnel and their spouses, as well as 2,340 police personnel. Dato Ikmaruddin, through a statement release, said that the entire early voting process will be implemented in compliance with the COVID-19 prevention guidelines under the National Recovery Plan in force. This includes physical distancing, wearing off face masks, using off hand sanitizer, checking off body temperature and recording of attendance. Dato Ikmaruddin said agents of contesting candidates will be observing the early voting process, which will also be streamed live on the EC's Facebook page. He said the ballot boxes for the early voting will be kept at police lockups and the vote counting process will start at 4 p.m. on 20th November. He also said that the vote counting will be held at the census set by the EC and the process will be witnessed by the agents of the contesting candidates. The polling for the state election is set on 20th November. November. All candidates in the Malacca state election should seize the opportunity provided by the government to use the Radio Television Malaysia RTM platform to introduce themselves to the people. AMNO Supreme Council member Datuk Suriwiza American and American said the move was a positive development in the country's democratic system. That the Suri Riza American, who is also Housing and Local Government Minister, thanked Tan Sri Anwar Musa as the Communications and Multimedia Minister for such a commendable move. He would like to encourage all candidates in the Malacca state election to seize this opportunity so that they can be better known by the people. Saya rasa ini adalah satu perkembangan yang baik dan terima kasih kepada Tan Sri Anwar Musa selaku menteri dia yang membuka lantai demokrasi melalui penyertaan mereka di ruang-ruang yang disediakan oleh ATM. Kapsul dan data tentu sekali disediakan oleh ATM. Jadi saya nak menggalakkan semua calon-calon. Tak kira lah yang calon itu utamanya lah kalau saya calon BN dan calon-calon yang telah menawarkan diri untuk menawar sebagai wakil rakyat dalam pilihan raya negeri Melaka ini agar menggunakan kesempatan yang disediakan oleh ATM agar mereka dapat lebih dikenali oleh rakyat melalui siaran-siaran yang disiarkan oleh RTM. He said this to reporters after campaigning for Barisan Nasional candidate Datuk Koh Chin Han, who is contesting for the Bumban seat. On Saturday, Tan Sri Anwar said the government will allow RTM to air posters and biodata of all candidates contesting in the Malacca polls from 14th November. Still to come, over 77% education loaners commence repayment. Stay with us. Hepatitis adalah penyakit keradangan hati akibat daripada jangkitan virus hepatitis. Hepatitis A yang berjangkit melalui pencemaran makanan dan air biasanya menyebabkan jangkitan hati yang akut dan tidak perpanjangan. Hepatitis B dan C pula berjangkit melalui darah yang tercemar. Antaranya adalah melalui perkongsian jarum suntikan, transfusi darah, hubungan seksual dan jangkitan ibu kepada anak. Berlainan daripada hepatitis A, hepatitis B dan C boleh menyebabkan kerosakan hati yang kronik dan barah hati. Kebanyakan pesakit hepatitis B dan C tidak mengalami tanda dan gejala pada peringkat awal. Tanda atau gejala seperti muntah darah, jaundis dan busung hanya akan muncul setelah penyakit hepatitis menjadi semakin kronik. Oleh itu, lakukan ujian saringan hepatitis jika anda berisiko tinggi untuk mendapat jangkitan dan dapatkan rawatan dengan segera jika perlu di klinik kesihatan terdekat bersama kita cegah hepatitis. A total of 77.75% or almost 800,000 National Higher Education Fund Corporation PTPTN borrowers have paid up their loans. Higher Education Minister Dato Suri Dr. Nuraini Ahmad said so far, 2.4 million of the borrowers have completed their studies. 
dan sepatutnya PTPTN mula menerima um, hampir 24.6 bilion sebagai bayaran balik tapi uh, setakat ini 77.75% uh, telah mula membayar balik uh, dengan dengan jumlah uh, hampir 800,000 peminjam telah selesaikan uh, pinjaman. Uh, 400,000 peminjam sedang membuat bayaran balik secara konsisten mengikut jadual pembayaran tersebut. Dan seramai uh, 700,000 lebih kurang peminjam membuat bayaran balik tetapi tidak uh, konsisten. Datuk Seri Dr. Noraini added that until last September, PTPTN had collected 15.5 billion ringgit in loan repayments. She said the ministry found that the provision of incentives such as payment discounts has succeeded in getting borrowers to pay up their loans. The minister added that among the initiatives taken by PTPTN as announced by Finance Minister Tengku Datuk Seri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz recently were the 15% discount for full settlement of outstanding loans, 12% discount for partial payments of outstanding loans and 10% discount for payments by salary deduction. A new law on online gambling needs to be formulated to enable the activity to be monitored and curbed more effectively. Deputy Communications and Multimedia Minister Datuk Zahidi Zainul Abidin said the absence of such a law at the moment had made it difficult for monitoring to be carried out as the internet domains and protocol of websites used for the activity could be changed repeatedly. Elaborating further, Datuk Zahidi said the only available law pertaining to gambling is the Common Gaming Houses Act 1953, which focuses on gambling in a common gaming house. The Deputy Minister said under the new law, the activity could also be licensed for the purpose of collecting tax, which could be used to cover the costs for monitoring operations. On efforts to tackle the issues of spam messages promoting online gambling, he said the Ministry, through the Communications and Multimedia Commission, had conducted a data verification audit of prepaid phone line customers to ensure that all active numbers were properly verified. Bermula 2018 hingga 31 Oktober 2021, sejumlah 4,799 laman web judi dalam talian telah disekat berdasarkan permohonan resmi pihak PDRM atas kelasaharaan di bawah atau rumah judi terbuka. Sembilan lima puluh tiga. He also said that during the same period, 20,025 phone lines have been terminated for sending spam messages which promote online gambling, illegal money lending. State governments will receive the distribution of the federal government's revenue, provided there is any increase in the revenue collected. Deputy Finance Minister 2 Yamani Hafiz Musa said normally the Finance Ministry would provide an allocation of 250 million ringgit a year to be distributed to all states after the Accountant General's Department has confirmed an increase in the federal government's annual revenue and gross domestic product GDP data received from the Economic Planning Unit EPU. Commenting further, Yamani Hafiz said the distribution of the revenue increase was made in accordance with the provisions of the Revenue Growth Distribution Act 2007 and Revenue Growth Distribution Amendment Act 2007. He said the distribution is based on the principle of revenue sharing. Where there is an increase in federal government's revenue in a particular financial year compared to the previous year, the states will receive this amount. Apabila terdapat pertambahan dalam hasil kerajaan persekutuan pada sesuatu tahun kewangan jika dibandingkan dengan tahun yang sebelumnya, negeri-negeri akan mendapat pemberian ini. Secara lazimnya, Kementerian Kewangan akan menyediakan peruntukan berjumlah 250 juta ringgit setahun. The Terengganu State Government today tabled the 2022 budget theme Merakyatkan Sejahtera Untuk Semua with an allocation of 1.657 billion ringgit for operating expenditure and 600 million ringgit for development expenditure. Menteri Besar Datuk Seri Dr. Ahmad Samsuri Mukhtar said the State Government would also allocate 40 million ringgit for water supply expenditure. 
under operating expenditure. He said a total of 92.99 million ringgit is allocated for liability payment and 1.56 billion ringgit is allocated for supplies. He said this when tabling the budget at the State Assembly sitting at Wisma Darul Iman in Kuala Terengganu today. The state government also introduced the IFITRI aid of 400 ringgit to 31,500 poor families and 250 ringgit to households with an income of between 2,500 ringgit to 5,000 ringgit. The IFITRI aid is expected to be disbursed by ideal fitri celebrations next year. Terengganu's tabling of the 2022 budget also allocates 500 ringgit in the form of cash or education fund to 70 students who became orphans due to death of their parent or legal guardians to COVID-19. About 14,000 state civil servants will also be receiving a bonus of 700 ringgit in appreciation of their services. The police will continue to replace its fleet of vehicles, which have outlived their economic lifespan in stages. Deputy Inspector General of Police, Datuk Sri Mazlan Lazim, said more vehicles will be purchased once the force gets the budget from the government to allow it to carry out its work effectively. Datuk Sri Mazlan said, although some of these vehicles had surpassed its economic lifespan, they were still in good condition and had served the force well. Citing the Negeri Sembilan fleet of police vehicles, he said although more than 80% of the vehicles owned by the state police are supposed to have been replaced with new ones, they are still able to use them as these vehicles have been maintained well. Kita berperingkat untuk menukarkan kenderaan itu mengikut kemampuan bajet kerajaan. Lah, eh. Kalau kerajaan apa nama bagi bajet, kita tak masalah. Kalau itu pun, uh, kita dapati bahawa 500 lebih yang kenderaan ada di kondisi ini, kita masih dapat minum negara kenderaan tersebut. Eh. Daripada time to time, kita akan menggantikan kenderaan yang tersebut untuk penggunaan ataupun melaksanakan tanggungjawab kita di kondisi yang tengah bulan sembilan. Eh. He said this to reporters after handing over 25 brand new vans and pickup trucks to the state police contingent. Datuk Sri Mazlan also thanked the government for approving a budget to purchase 640 vans and pickup trucks for all state police contingents. Pharma Nega Berhad said the company on Saturday marked its entrance into the vaccine international market by successfully exporting the first batch of Sinovac field and finished COVID-19 vaccine to Myanmar, manufactured by its wholly owned subsidiary European Union certified high-tech plant Pharma Nega Life Science Sindrian Berhad PLS. The pharmaceutical company in a statement today said that in Myanmar, the Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine will be marketed by Hemas Mandala Pharmaceuticals Limited, a Myanmar-based pharmaceutical company which has placed an initial order of 200,000 doses of field and finished Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine from Pharma Nyaga. Pharma Nyaga Group Managing Director Datuk Zulkarnain Mat Yusof said the collaboration with Hemas Mandala would help to accelerate Myanmar's private market vaccination program. Datuk Zulkarnain noted the export of Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines gives confidence to Pharma Nyaga to further explore similar opportunities in other Southeast Asian neighbouring countries and also the African countries. To date, Pharma Nyaga said it has distributed a total of 20.4 million doses of both finished and filled Sinovac COVID-19 vaccines to 10 million or one-third of the population in Malaysia. Air AJX AAX has given assurance that it will put in place travelling privileges in the form of travel credits for its passengers who are affected by its debt restructuring. It said the credits can be utilised for future purchases of flight tickets once international borders reopen. AAX through a statement released said the affected passengers would also receive the 0.5% payment of what is owed and other cash-based entitlements based on its annual revenue performance over three years as explained in the explanatory statement issued to all creditors recently.
The airline said this in response to clarify various media reports on passengers' classification and their entitlements as classified under the scheme of arrangement that was supported by 99% of all its creditors. The airline noted that the entitlements and the travel credits can only take place if AAX is successfully restructured pursuant to the terms of the scheme. If the terms of the scheme are not complied with and the scheme fails, AAX will go into liquidation and the passengers will not receive anything in return. National Man Single Coach Hendrawan has backed Malaysia's top shuttler Lee Zija, saying that his inconsistent performance will provide him the maturity needed in the future. According to Hendrawan, the 23-year-old must endure this experience before he can emerge as the world's best shuttler. Ya setia uh, satu dia belum matang ya belum matang betul-betul totally macam dia sudah stable ya jadi seperti yang berapa kali atau berapa waktu yang lalu bahwa kalau dia boleh bermain dia boleh keluarkan the best gamenya dia ya dia boleh absen siapa saja tetapi kembali juga kalau dia tidak boleh mengeluarkan gamenya atau pressure atau fokusnya penat ya dia boleh kalah dengan siapa saja memang ini normal lah Aha. player belum matang memang seperti ini dengan ini semua uh, turnamen up and down atau ini ya ini jalan yang harus dia lalui the 2021 all england champion was unable to display his best performance in a series of tournaments in September. Zija, however, managed to advance to the final of the Hilo Open in Germany recently, but was forced to retire in the deciding set due to a lower back injury. Set to return to the court at the Indonesian Masters in Bali, Zija is scheduled to meet Danish shuttler Rasmus Gemke next. And so that concludes news at 10, making the headline tonight. 21st March set for next year's school term commencement. Tune in for more updates at 12.30pm tomorrow. I'm Shuhaida Arifin. Goodbye for now.